Hello and welcome back to the Quad Life. Oh, we're getting a good start into our month of spinal cord injury awareness. So today we're going to talk about ventilator cord breathing. Now, yesterday I talked about the different levels of spinal cord injury and really what each level meant as far as abilities and what was affected by depending on what was injured and it's around level c4 that diaphragm control it is affected so if someone has an injury that is above c4 so mine which is c23 then they either have partial or complete loss of the control of the diaphragm. And that includes me, that I'm unable to control my diaphragm at all. So therefore, that means I'm unable to breathe on my own. So when I was initially injured in the accident, that means I immediately did not have the ability to breathe. And for other people that receive a similar in a similar injury, that means if they do not receive immediate help, then they usually pass away. And for me, thankfully, I had someone that came up shortly after our accident and started to breathe for me. Um, and the vehicle that we were in, with it being a two-door car, that could not work with me in the back seat as I was. So he had to carefully bring me out of the car in order to lay me on the pavement to breathe for me. But thankfully that is what uh, happened and I'm able to be here today. So initially, when I was injured and in the hospital, I was put on a type of ventilator called a PLV-100. Now at that time in 1985, there were really only two choices for a portable type of ventilator that could be used easily at home or on a wheelchair. And my parents chose to go with the PLV-100 because its competitor was a lot noisier. And, you know, if I'm going to have this thing around me all the time, then, well, I want a quieter option. And I remember that as a three-year-old in the hospital, you know, I didn't really understand everything that was going on. And that included my breathing. I remember laying in the hospital and seeing this big green box beside me that had these blinking lights on it every now and then. And I remember asking the nurse at one point, Ooh, can I take this home with me? It's fun to... Uh, see the blinking lights on it and they're pretty green and the nurse assured me yes you can take it home with you I was really excited that I'll get to do that granted I had to take it home since I of course was attached to it and it was breathing for me but hey three-year-old self it made me happy kids are easy to please sometimes right but the PLV-100 is what I stayed on for decades, and it's what I used all throughout grade school, high school, college, and for several years after that. It's what I got used to, and we knew very well um, its quirks and its limitations such as my wheelchair was built that I had an extra battery for the vent and if it was fully charged then 
I could go around 12 or so hours to be out with it and everything worked well. But as everything, um, technology changed over the decades and around 2008 I was uh, going through some harder times and I got a call or an opportunity to be part of a um, kind of a call or a discussion group of a company called Synapse and they had a device called a diaphragmatic pacemaker system or a DPS now at that time I vaguely heard of it but wasn't real familiar with it and they went over everything that um, it was an implant that would help you breathe and could possibly make it so I was no longer dependent on the regular ventilator and that kind of thing it's like well it sounded all right but I wasn't quite sure about it I especially didn't like the idea of having an implant but kind of molded over for a while and thought well you know what it would kind of uh, be nice to get off of the vent that I would no longer have tubes and the noise of the ventilator because even though the PLV100 was quieter than its competitor well it still made noise so after a lot of paperwork and working with my parents and everything I got the implant for the pacemaker in November 2010 and my mom especially was very unsure about it and didn't really see the need for any change because hey, the regular event was working fine and it's what we were used to so why change it but ended up getting it and for the most part it has worked well since um, I was told when I got the surgery that it would take a while for my diaphragm to get used to it because the way the pacemaker works is that I have two wires on each side of my diaphragm and a fifth ground wire that's kind of in the gut and all of these five wires then come out to a port on my side of my chest that then goes to an external box and that box gives the wire a stimulation every four seconds or 15 times a minute so I take a breath so that is why you see my shoulders bounce and that is why I also pause so more on that here in a little bit but it took quite a while for my diaphragm to get used to being used again because at that point it had been around 25 plus years since my diaphragm had been used at all and like any muscle that doesn't get used it gets atrophied and had to be slowly built up again but thankfully by May of 2011 so around six months later I was off the regular ventilator completely during the day and then it took quite a while to be able to get off the vent completely 24-7 but thankfully I was able to eventually after a couple years and now it has been nearly 12 years and still using the pacemaker and it works pretty well my only drawbacks with it are one my speech quality I don't like having to stop every four seconds in order to take a breath but for the most part I've learned to try to hide it 
and I've yeah kind of gotten used to it. Also, it's harder to get parts for it, um, such as the brackets and on my chest. I have to order from a place out of state, but thankfully, insurance. Um, um, thankfully, I'm able to get them and the batteries that make it work. Um, each pacemaker, I have two of them, runs on a lithium battery that's about uh, the size of a regular C battery, but unfortunately, like everything else, the prices of them have really gone up. And all of this has to come out of my pocket and insurance doesn't cover it but we'll talk more about funding later so those are the main drawbacks and also that living in Iowa no one um, supports the system or really can help me with it so I have to work with out of state people to get it worked on so like everything there are good and bad points and I do have a backup ventilator with me. Um, I'm no longer allowed to have my PLV 100s because of funding stuff. We'll see if I go into that later. But I do always have now a Trilogy ventilator with me. And I keep that in the back of my vehicle. So that it's either right here with me at home or it's with me if I go out somewhere. But that is breathing with a high level spinal cord injury. And tomorrow's video, I'll talk more about the connection for the vents and this thing of my trach button. So that is all for today. And thank you for watching. And Bye for now.